I um, intend to just do a quick walkthrough on how to take an x-ray using virtual radiography um, projection VR. So um, the icons that you get um, in the package, um, the green icon is Tomo VR, which is our CT simulator, and Technic VR is our physics um, tutorial, and those two go together. Um, you see a lot of the changes in parameters um, that you can do in computed tomography are um, shown in Technic um, VR. Um, for general x-ray, which is what I'm going to show you today, you've got um, the x-ray room and the console that go together to make up uh, a general x-ray environment, and Technic VR will give you the physics parameters um, tied in with that. And then finally we have lecture VR, which is our ability, the ability in a classroom to use um, the technology that generates a digitally reconstructed radiograph from CT data, which underpins all our simulations, um, without having to do a simulation. So you can use a tool to demonstrate projections to a classroom environment. I'm not going to show you that today. So um, I tend to look at this as a um, a walkthrough. So if you've got this software installed, if you've just downloaded a um, an evaluation copy, or if you're sitting in a lab with the software installed and you want to have play along with me, then that might be a great idea. Um, so what you want to do is fire up the red icon, the X-ray room. And there it will appear. Um, in there. Now, <clears throat> what I tend to find is that um, students tend to leave the, the software in this state and operate it within a little window within the screen, um, as if there's something really important going to happen in the background which you mustn't ever miss. Um, so I already encourage the students to maximise the window so you get a better view on the world. Um, there's nothing else going to happen. You're, you're immersed in the world, so um, it's a good idea to uh, use all of the screen um, to see um, the world best. Okay, so um, what we're doing now is we're using a mouse. So you can use the scroll wheel, the left mouse button and the right mouse button to do various tasks um, on the interface on the room. So um, the first thing I can do is if I click with my left mouse button, and I get this sort of orbiting um, icon and that or cursor, and that allows then that means that if I make a movement of my mouse now I'll orbit a particular point in the room. Okay, so I'm spinning around by moving my mouse while I've got the left mouse button clicked. So I'm, I'm sure if you're following me along, you'd be able to do that. Now, if I use the scroll wheel, then I can zoom in on that point, so I can actually look at it closer. Um, and it appears that I'm looking at a part of the x-ray table, just above the x-ray table. I can spin round. Look at that lovely liner. Or I can spin out and use the scroll wheel to zoom out. So by zooming in and zooming out using the scroll wheel and by spinning around, I can pay attention to a particular point in the room. But what if I don't want to look at this bit? I want to look at the erect bucky. Um, so what I need to do is move my point of view over to the erect bucky. So I use the left, the right mouse button, sorry. And if I click that, then I get this translation cursor, which allows me to indicate that I'm moving my point of view. So if I move my point of view over to the erect bucky, now when I spin around, I'm actually looking at that from different angles. Okay, and I can zoom in and out of that. So in combination, left mouse button, zoom wheel, uh, scroll wheel, and right mouse button, and I can always pay attention to any particular part of the x-ray room that I want to. Uh, it just takes me a little while just to get it in the middle, so I'm happy that when I spin around I'm seeing it from different angles. Yeah, um, that's very important when you're trying to judge a position and trying to judge your collimation and things. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing I might want to do in the x-ray room, apart from move myself about and see it from different angles, is move things within the environment. So um, if I hover over certain objects, 
um, and you'll notice that my cursor stops being an eye and becomes a hand. Okay, and that indicates that if I now left click, I'm actually going to do something different. And if you notice that if I left click that hand now, it turns into a clenched fist, which means I've got hold of something. And you'll notice that the um, tabletop has actually gone red, bright red. So that means that I've got hold of that object. And so I can now move my mouse around, holding my finger on the left mouse button, and it moves the floating tabletop. Okay. And other things that I might be able to move will also appear with a hand icon. So um, I'm pointing to the table bucky. So if I grab the table bucky and open it, then I can open the bucky tray and close it. Okay. If I go over to the erect bucky or the chest stand or the wall bucky or whatever you want to call it, then if I click on that, then I can move it up and down. And if I go over to the bucky tray, then I can open and close that. <coughs> now you'll notice in this corner here, we've actually got a grey um, pane, and that's the help pane. And if you point at things, it tells you what they're called. So that's the erect bucky, and that's the bucky tray. And it tells you what you can do with it in terms of moving it. Okay. You can also move the bucky to the bottom or to the top of the um, table. Okay, so what about if I want to move things that are locked? So if I move over to the x-ray tube, you notice that it's locked. There's a padlock icon. And if we look into the uh, grey window over in the corner here, it tells me which key I can press to unlock it to do various movements. So just like a real x-ray machine, when you want to unlock it, you have to press a button to unlock it and then move it. In this case you do that as well. So if I want to press the S key down on the keyboard and hold it down, then I get the hand icon and now if I click and drag then it will move in that direction. So that's across the table. F it'll move along the table and D it'll move height wise, it'll change the height. Okay. If I hold the E key down, then I can rotate the tube, and I have to use the scroll wheel to make a rotation. It's always the scroll wheel to make a rotation. If I want to move the left light beam diaphragm, then I hover over the light beam diaphragm, and I can use the scroll wheel to rotate that. And if I want to move the gantry, I can press the E key down and I can use the scroll wheel to rotate the gantry. <coughs> so in combination of mouse movements and keyboard keys then I can get the um, x-ray tube into a right mess quite easily. Um, so because that's um, a little bit laborious to do we've got some shortcut methods to get it back to work standard positions. So if you go over to the scenario menu and click on it, then if you click floating table, then it'll automatically go back to pointing at the floating table at the default detent position. And if you go to scenario chest stand, then it'll automatically go to point at the chest stand at a source image distance of 180 centimeters, which is standard. Okay, just some quick wins, um, just to make it quick to uh, get to various positions. Now, when I was moving the tube, um, you probably, you've been doing that, if you've been working along with me, then you'll notice that as you move across the um, middle of the table, then it will automatically lock into a position. Um, and it will automatically lock at position, the height positions. So there's a default detent position that is the standard position. And there's one for the chest stand, at 180 centimeters and one for the um, table bucky um, when the table is raised to its working height at 100 centimeters source image distance. Okay so that's pretty much all um, that we can do in the room. So we now need a receptor to um, make an exposure. So if we go along the top here this is called the tool ribbon 
And if we click on the um, left hand icon, and it actually has a help um, that will pop up to tell you what each of these things is. Um, so if we click on this, then it uh, selects that for a correct receptor. And it um, defaults to a DR environment. So these receptors are uh, wireless DR receptors. And we have two sizes. We have the 3543 and we have the 2430. Um, they come in two sort of flavors. They come in one without a grid and one with a grid um, for each size. So the 8 to 1 parallel is a, a scatter rejection grid. So we don't want that at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to do the iconic hand x-ray to start with. So um, I'm going to pick a 2430 um, centimeter receptor. And if you're in the US, then this will be a... Um, a 1210 receptor will be come up in inches um, automatically for you. So we're going to pick that by clicking OK and now my cursor becomes a receptor and if I hover over um, an area of red then it allows me to drop it. So I can choose to drop it either on the um, erect bucky or on the table bucky. So as soon as I get it on the um, over the table bucky I can drop it and then it will position itself on the on the bucky there. Now once I've dropped it I can grab it and move it. I can open the bucky tray and I can pull it into the bucky and close the tray um, or I can pull it out of the bucky and close the bucky tray. If I hover over it then I can also use the scroll wheel to rotate it and if I want to do that quickly then I can use the right mouse button, hold that down while I scroll, and then it will go around in movements of 45 degrees. Notice that there's a yellow edge and a yellow dot. This is to indicate the top of the receptor so that you can practice receptor orientation to make sure the students get that correct. Okay, so once we've got a receptor, then we want to be able to put a marker on. So we've got side markers up here on the um, tool ribbon. So I'm going to pick a left side marker. So if I click that, it goes into this special view so that the receptor is front and center, and then you can just drop the side marker on the receptor. You have to press the check mark or the tick mark here to get out of that view once you're happy. Okay, now um, if I want to change my mind about where to put the receptor, I can grab it and move it anywhere I want once I've um, dropped it and I can also use the scroll wheel to rotate it and I can also use the right mouse click and the scroll wheel to rotate it quickly if I want to put it at a jaunty angle. Okay so that's I'm happy with that I'm going to leave it at that little angle there that's going to be my little signature move. Okay <clears throat> now we want to be able to collimate so these buttons here on the tool ribbon um, are equivalent to pressing the buttons on the light beam diaphragm. So if I press the light button on, then I get my collimation. Um, and if I press, if I hover over the left hand toggle here and use the scroll wheel, then I can change the size of the collimation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the table so that the receptor, well, I'll move the receptor and the table so that the little check marks line up with the lines on the collimation so that I'm centering my central ray to the middle of the receptor. Okay, and now I can turn that. If I leave it, it will turn off after 30 seconds, but if I click it, it will turn the light off for me. Okay, so that is, that is the interface for using the X-ray room. Um, next, we need um, something to X-ray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this window and I'm going to fire up the white icon which is the console VR console. Okay, it's just taking a little bit of time. Now what it wants me to do is identify myself um, to it and this will actually all go into the DICOM header 
So any image that you generate will be a DICOM object, and if you actually have a pack, you can assign the packs an incoming folder, um, and then any image the students um, generate or that you generate um, will go straight into the packs, which can be a good way of keeping track of uh, everybody's uh, portfolio of images. Okay, so the console, again, same scenario. We don't want all of this background um, because it's not useful, so we're going to make that full screen. Unlike a normal clinical system, um, we have space to show two images at the same time. So this is one image and this will be another image um, because you generally want to see the improvement you've made when you're learning from the image you took previously. Whereas obviously when you're a professional, you've probably got it right first time. So that's where the images will appear in this black area here. We've got the normal routine tools that you can use to spin the image round. We've got windowing tools um, and an exposure index demonstrated on the bottom here. On the left hand pane, we've got the controls for our exposure um, and various optimization settings. Um, and if we see these tabs, we've got a tech data tab which will demonstrate a lot of data um, from each exposure. When we've done an exposure, this will fill up with data. Um, including the radiation dose to the patient and things such as that. Um, but first we need to pick a patient. So if we click on the study tab, then that brings up the um, option to look at a modality work list. So by clicking on this, we'll get the modality work list up. And you can see there's a lot of patients waiting in the waiting area. And these patients are all from the um, the Simpsons um, universe. So they're all fictional um, cartoon characters. Um, so we can pick these patients um, and um, each patient um, has a referral, an electronic referral, and that referral has clinical history and indications. So you can use this to teach your students um, or students can use this to learn some of the medical terms. Um, so I'll just find one that's... Uh, so here we've got pink urine, ureteric calculi. So you can find out why is ureteric calculi, what are, what are ureteric calculi, and why would pink urine be an indicator of um, a ureteric calculi. Um, so students can have a look at all of these, and they can also think about whether or not um, they're justified. So is a pre-employment chest x-ray justified? Does the fact that the person's a dive instructor have any bearing on whether or not it's justified? So the students can have really nice discussions about this um, and think about it. So we're going to pick, um, in this case, I'm going to pick a quality assurance test object because I'm just going to recreate the very first x-ray taken um, which was Rontgen's wife's hand. So we're going to do a hand x-ray. So I'm going to pick the phantom hand. So you see that there are patients and there are phantoms. Um, just like you can x-ray a plastic phantom in the real world, so we're going to x-ray a plastic phantom in the virtual world. So I'm going to pick that and make selection. And then I'm not going to give it any more information. I'm just going to call it a quality assurance test object. So it's pulled in a default exposure for a quality assurance test object here. Um, we can change that um, once we've got the patient. So I'm going to go back to the x-ray room. And I'm going to bring our patient into the room. So that's this button here on the tool ribbon. OK. So there's our plastic hand. Um, now. Before I get carried away, the table is still at its floor height. So the source image distance is 127 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise that up because I'll forget to do that otherwise. Um, so um, 
D is the raise and lower key, so I'm going to press that, lift it up, and it locks to 100 centimeters um, from the tabletop. If I was to press D again and lift it up, it will go up to 100 centimeters to the bucky tray. Um, it's got two, two lock positions for the table, much like most other um, systems. Now we can either rotate the hand to get the fingers at the yellow edge, the top, or we can just rotate the receptor. I'm going to rotate the receptor because it's a little bit easier than rotating the hand. And if we look at this from the side, when I hover over the hand, I can grab hold of it and move it. Um, but if I hover over the middle of it, then I can move the whole object up and down. So I'm going to bring it down so it's touching the receptor. And I'm just going to grab the fingers and move them down. Just need to be a little bit gentle. But it's no more tricky than sort of like balancing a plastic hand on a foam pad or something to make a, a test exposure. Okay, so um, if I move the table to the middle of the receptor and open the collimation. What I can do is actually center to the prescribed centering point for a hand, which is the third metacarpal head. Move my receptor and I'm very happy with that. So I've got collimation showing and I've got the uh, centering point correct. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my um, control panel. Now a hand wouldn't normally need that much radiation, so I'm going to drop this down to 55 tube voltage and tube charge of something like 2 MAS. And I'm going to hover over, I'm not going to have any copper filtration, uh, I've got a small focal spot size, so I'm going to hover over the exposure button until it goes into uh, preparation mode, and now it's ready so I can click on it. Okay, so I get my image up here. <clears throat> Okay, so we notice that the image is very grey, um, and that's because it's got a window width of 2,900, so it's got a very large window. So we can narrow that window down by either clicking and dragging in the receptor to window it, or by just dragging on the, um, on the sliders here. Um, this is very useful for teaching the students about windowing. Um, now, modern systems are very good at creating the first correct window. Um, we haven't got, um, we haven't really replicated that, partly because this is an educational environment, and so we want to just make it sure the students can actually um, know about windowing and practice it before they go into placement. Okay, so my hand's there. I don't need to rotate it because I got the um, orientation correct. I don't need to flip it because uh, I did it correctly and my markers on there indicating that. What I can do is bring the annotations in. Um, so it tells me what the patient was and their date of birth, what my exposures were, um, and what the exam was. And it tells me who I am. It puts my name on it as well. So that's quite nice. Um, We've got an exposure index at the bottom here, telling me whether or not the exposure that I set was adequate. So my exposure index should be 300 for a DR image on uh, this system. So I'm a little bit over what I should be. So I could have dropped this down to something like 1 or even 0.5. Um, if I go to the tech data, then it tells me a lot more information. So it tells me. Um, that I didn't use a grid and that my scatter fraction in this image is 42%, which is quite a lot, isn't it? Um, I've got a dose area product, um, which is related to the amount of radiation and the collimation area. I've got um, the incident dose and the entrance surface dose. So the incident dose um, is the amount of radiation entering the patient, but the entrance surface dose is the amount of radiation at the surface of the patient, including backscatter fraction. 
um, and then we've got the system dose um, for the plate uh, and we've also got the exposure index from various manufacturers so if this was a, a care stream plate it would be a, a 1972 um, if it was an agfa plate it would be 2.48 if it was a fuji s fuji plate it would be 93 and we've also got the latitude value here for fuji okay so congratulations you've taken your first radiograph um, so let's continue on with the exam if we were going to be doing a hand then what we'd want to do is we'd want to rotate this round so I'm going to just scroll around with my um, mouse I'm going to raise that up pull this down a little bit and then it should be fine So something like that for the oblique. I'm going to set that. I'm going to, certain textbooks say to aim at the fifth, but I'm going to still center for the middle of the hand. Um, I think I might want to make that a bit steeper as an angle. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with that as an oblique hand. And I'm going to go back to my receptor. I'm going to learn the lesson from the exposure parameters. I'm going to drop that down to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and I'm going to expose this. Okay, so I've now got my oblique hand and my AP hand, and my exposure index is bang on 300. Look, so I've uh, learned the lesson from the oblique. I've also shortened the collimation, so I've got four collimation marks now whereas I didn't have four in the past. Of course, this is a great tool for teaching students how to critique their images. Um, so I'm very happy with that. So I'm now going to um, save these images. So if I go File, Save Left Image, um, it gives me an automatic name. So I can call it a JPEG. Uh, I'm going to change that. I'm going to add to that a bleak hand. And I'll save that on the desktop. And if I go File, Save Right Image, DP Hand on the desktop. So um, if that was um, something that you'd set the students to do, then um, You've got those images now for them to pull into some sort of a, um, a report. So that was a, a quick rendition of um, the uh, how to get started using the software. Um, I'm just going to dismiss this patient now and show you um, how to image a real person or a virtually real person. So if I go back to the study tab now, click on the modality worklist and we pick um, a patient for um, an ankle. So this is Homer Simpson for a left ankle. Um, so he's um, complaining of pain over the lateral aspect of his ankle. Query fractured talus. So I'm going to do an AP ankle. So it's pulled in a, a default exposure for that. So we'll go back to the room and bring him in. So now instead of getting a disembodied foot, we've actually got um, a person. We can get that person onto the table. And then we can raise the table back up again. And we can click on his ankle, move the receptor down here. Change the orientation. Using the mouse, I can abduct, adduct, I can flex and extend, and I can internally rotate. So I'll just move the tube down and shine the light.
So collimate side to side. And we're just going to let that see what happens. I think given that the hand we had to drop down quite a lot, I think this should probably be enough if we go 60 and something like 2. Okay, so there's our ankle, which we just window. I only just got my marker on, but I did. Haven't quite got through that joint space there, so um, as an AP, it's maybe okay. Um, but we'll just uh, go back to that. And if I rotate the foot in slightly, um, and if we retake that, can't hurt because uh, we're only simulating it. So yes, that's very nice. So I'm now through that joint space um, in a much better fashion than I was before. So I can move on and do the lateral. So obviously I would talk to him if he was a real person and ask him to turn halfway onto his side. So I'm just doing that by using the rotation control. And then if I just rotate his foot out to get the lateral. Of course we could do this with the shoot through lateral if we got him on a trolley. Um, okay, so So it's just a mouse, just make sure you're looking at it from different angles, just like in real radiography really. If you just stand there and don't actually look round, every radiographer's got that little head movement, haven't they, that makes them look and see what's going on. So um, I'm now happy to complete that. And we've got the lateral. So I've now got an AP and lateral ankle. And we've got some nice soft tissues there. We can see the Achilles um, tendon. And so that's the demonstration for today. So um, once we're happy, we can drop him down off the table, um, take him off the table and discharge him. Okay, thank you very much for watching this small video.